British people know very little about Tom Paine, and yet it's doubtful whether any single British writer has ever had such an enormous impact on the world. And one of his books, The Age of Reason, was condemned throughout the world for preaching atheism. How do you preach atheism? Do you wander around the streets on a Sunday morning knocking on the doors of religious people? And when they answer, go, have you heard the bad news? Payne also wrote the best-selling book ever in America up to that time, which inspired the War of Independence. He wrote The Rights of Man, which became the best-selling book ever in Britain up to that time, and almost inspired a revolution. And then he wrote The Age of Reason. Payne was a corset maker from the town of Thetford in East Anglia. So straight away that seems strange. Can you be a revolutionary from East Anglia? You can't imagine someone going, well, you've got to smash the state. I mean, if the people don't seize power, it's rum old doing it. In fact, it seems hard to imagine anybody English being passionate enough to be that stroppy. Other nationalities, yeah, like the Americans or the Spanish or the Italians, they'll get annoyed about anything. You could say, uh, you should be able to use a knife and fork with spaghetti. But an Englishman, you could go up and say, I would like to take away your wife in exchange for a mule. Well, you better go, dear, we don't want to make a fuss. Some people clearly do remember his impact. In 1964, the mayor of this town insisted that he would only agree to that statue being erected if it was inscribed with the words, convicted traitor. The mayor didn't get his way, but I don't know, maybe they came to some sort of a compromise. Payne was born in 1737, within sight of the local gallows, where there were regular hangings. Payne's father was a corset maker, and like many craftsmen with radical views, was also a Quaker. But at the age of 19, Tom ran away from home to be a pirate on a ship called the Terrible, captained by a sailor called Captain Death. No wonder he'd become a pirate. What else can you do once you call Captain Death? Then Payne went to Sandwich in Kent to try starting up his own corset-making business. But this didn't work, and neither did his marriage. In 1774, at the age of 37, out of work and bankrupt, he decided to completely abandon the life he'd been leading and go in search of something entirely different. He met the writer, Benjamin Franklin, who persuaded him to go to America. And this wasn't just a physical journey, but a political one. From now on, he was the enemy of royalists everywhere. Payne arrived in America at the beginning of the country's movement for independence from Britain. America at the time was made up of 13 separate British colonies. They weren't allowed to trade with each other or issue their own money. Then in 1765, the Stamp Act was passed, which allowed the British government to impose taxes on America. Taxes were introduced on church correspondence, liquor licenses, court documents, on wills and on dice. In response to the new taxes, a crowd attacked the governor of Massachusetts House with axes. A mass campaign broke out and the British repealed all the new duties except for one, on tea. Now everything revolved around tea. Opponents of British rule in Boston resolved that no Americans should aid the sale of tea. Medical reports were produced proving that tea was poisonous. Public notices were posted by the Sons of Liberty warning local tea agents they would be considered as... Wretches, unworthy to live and made the first victims of our resentment. And this culminated in the dumping of tons of tea in Boston Harbour. After the tea dumping, known as the Boston Tea Party, most of the colonies made it an offence to drink tea. Did that mean there were old dears knocking on the doors of shady dealers at night to buy their stash of tea leaves? and then going, well, it's like Elsie. She was smuggling some bags back from Morocco. Well, she swallowed them to get them through customs. One of them's burst in her stomach. The time she got home, she was really refreshed. <laughs> 